for bird kebab. I'm going to show you in a wee while. I really have had my head turned this past week. Two weeks ago, I did sign up to the RSP Big Bird Watch that Jenny mentioned, and I got all my information sent through in the post to me because I didn't do it online. Um, actually, there was something came up on the TV and it was text bird or something. So I did, I did the text bird, and then anyway, someone phoned me back. Very nice girl, and she took down my details and she sent out all this stuff. And as Jenny mentioned in her PowerPoint, the website is incredible. If you've never been on it, just go on it for the sake of spending three hours of your life. Um, online. The information is incredible. I have printed out how to tell birds apart. Um, I have printed out all the different types of foods that different birds like because I have turned into a bird spotter. Um, I am bird spotting like crazy. I've got two bird feeders outside my window and I've got them sitting there and you are told to you know, be patient. Birds are really shy. They don't come flocking in the first day. And that is so true. I was so disappointed. I think it was about two days before my first robin even visited me. Um, but that's my bird feeder has been up for, what, well, 10 days now. And I'll tell you, I mean, like, I, I knew what that um the bullfinch was because I was able to spot a bullfinch um, and it's amazing how quickly the birds do start to come once the jungle drums have beat and they've told everybody in the neighbourhood that you've got some tasty treats for them. So anyway, I am now an a, um, amateur bird spotter for real. But anyway, enough about me and my new found pastime. Um, let's talk about what we're here to talk about. Um, making bird food for our feathered friends has the obvious benefit of helping the birds, especially in the bleak of winter. But what about benefits to the folks we care for or support? This tabletop activity, which is ideal for this time of year, when really we can't go out or we're limited to what we can be doing outdoors in relation to gardening activity, um, and especially for those that are maybe a bit elderly or a bit less mobile, going outside, we snow here today, there was a wee bit of stuffy underfoot. So this tabletop activity enables us to promote the social, emotional, physical and cognitive benefits to many. Outcomes could include creativity, you know, like the triumph in achievement and production of bird feed food itself is amazing our fine motor and cognitive skill, skills, social inclusion, gathering around a table in a group, or as Jenny's saying, even one-to-one. -one. It's a great opportunity to engage with someone on a one-to-one -one basis. It's fabulous for passive restoration, just letting be. You know, once I get into doing my making the bird feeders here, you'll see there's one uh, activity in particular that is brilliant for passive restoration, which in turn can lead to stress reduction. Um, physical activity and exercise. Okay, sitting around a table and not doing very much other than some um, arm stretches and some fine motor movements. Could, isn't going to burn up hundreds of calories, but it could be the start to some people's rehabilitation from falling from a, a wrist accident perhaps, or once we've got the bird feeders made, they have to go outdoors. The birds aren't going to come inside and get them, so somebody's going to have to take them outside. And providing the pathway is accessible to where you want to hang your feeder so you can see them from indoors, that in itself is physical activity and extended exercise. And of course, the fulfillment of knowing that you've helped wildlife. As Jenny mentioned, we're part of the wider world. Um, we're just a cog in the wheel and for us to do our bit for the wildlife um, is only a good thing. It helps them and it, and it helps us. So Jenny mentioned in the um, on our PowerPoint the RSPB information, there's loads of information on types of bird food available that you can buy from the RSPB site or in most good um, pet shops and most supermarkets stock um, bird feed. But it's interesting when you start to read 
some of the information on the website. Um, there's some, be wary of ultra cheap bird food basically. Um, it's got a lot of fillers in it that really are not suitable for garden birds um, and they can attract the wrong type of bird to the garden. So try and make sure you're buying a, a quality bird feed and you should be okay. I've got a couple of things here that I have got out in my garden now. Um, we've got um, peanuts. Um, make sure you're using peanuts that are for the birds and definitely not using salted or dry roasted peanuts. Um, robins and wrens and nuthatches all love peanuts in particular. Now, point of interest, I always was told that you'll never get one robin in a garden. That's nonsense, or at least in Ayrshire, it's nonsense. I have got three robins, and I know that because they've all been eating the, the peanuts at the same time. And the other thing that I'm amazed by is the different sizes that robins come in. This, I'm embarrassed to admit that I didn't realise that. I thought they were all pretty much the same size, but I have got three completely different looking robins and one has even got a name, he's called Stripe, because he's got a wee white strip that goes up his wee red breast. So anyway, um, I digress, um, I'm sorry. Um, so that's the peanuts. Um, grated peanuts are better, and you tend to find that in the good quality bird mix seeds you get, there's grated peanuts through um, the, the mix seed. But whole peanuts are fine if you put them in a proper peanut feeder, and the wee Blue tits and robins hang on to the side and pick. Don't feed whole peanuts in the summertime, just the winter time. Um, sunflower hearts are another popular one. Uh, finches love uh, sunflower hearts. You can uh, put the, the whole sunflower seeds out as well, um, but you tend to get a lot of the shells lying about. It can be messy. If that's not a problem for you, that's okay. But the sunflower hearts go down a big, big treat. And as I've mentioned, this is a, a ready-made bird seed that I put into a feeder, and this is going down a treat. Honestly, goodness, I've had sparrows, um, finches, several finches. I got my first um, long-tailed uh, tit this morning, which was a first for I'm going to stop talking. Oh, let's move these out of the way and let's start doing something. Okay, so the first feeder that um, I'm going to show you how what we can make as a tabletop activity with your clients are Cheerio ring feeders. Now, this is a very elaborate one that I've made just to show you how elaborate it can be. Basically, it is pipe cleaners, which in themselves are lovely and tactile. And I've worked with groups where some people aren't the least bit interested in making the actual bird food feeder, um, but they're quite happy to sit and participate in the conversation. And they have sat and they have taken much comfort and therapy from playing with the, the, these fluffy pipe cleaners. Pipe cleaner, and these are like little hoops. Cheerios are like the kind of the, the branded name that I'm sure we'll, we'll all be familiar, but the, these are available from slightly cheaper supermarkets and they don't cost so much, but they are every bit as tasty to the, the birds. Now, make sure you just buy the whole grain Cheerios and not the honey coated ones or the chocolate coated ones. There's far too much sugar in them. If you don't want the birds having them, it's just the plain, healthy whole grain varieties. Oops. The table. So, what we want to do is take your pipe cleaner and make a V at the bottom, like so, and that stops the hoops from sliding off. You're going to take your hoop and slide it down the pipe cleaner all the way to the bottom. Now, I'm going to go quite quickly because you really don't want to sit and watch me doing this. And I'll try and put them on a little quicker than one at a time. But this is such a great activity for passive restoration. I have sat around many a table with many a group of people, and the chat that comes out of sitting doing this is incredible. We talk about favourite birds. My favourite bird is a wee Jenny Wren, just for information. 
Um, people talk about their favourite birds, why it's their favourite bird. And then we get on to talking about favourite bird songs. And the only bird song that I can ever remember is the one about the two little dicky birds called Peter and Paul fly away, Peter fly away, Paul. Anyway, so I then do my party piece of Peter and Paul trick that used to amaze my children when I was younger. Well, now they're grown up, they just laugh at me when I do it. But anyway, you can see this is building up quite nicely. I've done this activity with um, a blind man and he amazed me at how quickly his, I was going to use hand-eye coordination kicked in there and it is his sense and hand coordination kicked in and he was through making these. He was a pro at it. Love the activity. So you're going to continue making them go all the way till about there. You're going to have half at the end. Join the two together. Like so, see that? And twist really, really tightly because the little birds are going to come and land on this hoop. Providing you've made the hoop secure, we can now hook that over a branch of a tree or a bush, and the little birds will come and peck on this. Now, one word of warning, don't be making loads of these and hanging them all out, because it does take a good while for the wee birds to work out what they're meant to do with this. So if you make loads and put them outside, the rain comes and the rain turns them into mush and it's all wasted. I would make one or two, put them out in the garden and just wait for the birds to work out what they're meant to do. And when you see that they've clicked what their job is, then you can make more and replace them. So this is a simple hoop. I made two hoops and joined them together to make a more fancy shaped one. And then I made twisted two pipe cleaners together, securely twisted it all. And I'm going to hang that over a branch and the wee bird can land in that in there. Like so. so that's my first bird food that I want to show you. Word of caution, if you're using dry cereal for bird food, always, you should always have water out for the birds anyway, but make sure you definitely have water close by for the birds if you're using dry cereals for them. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is make a bird kebab. And that is not a pigeon on a barbecue. Birds love dried fruit, and these are dried cranberries and raisins that I've got in here. They love cheese, mild cheese. So this was cheese that was starting to go a wee bit off that I'm sure I could have used on a lasagna or something like that, but decided I would make it for the birds. And something else in. And things like pears and apples, the ones that are maybe just starting to go off a little bit in your fruit bowl that you don't fancy eating anymore, the birds just love them. In fact, they go mad for pears, so they do. So this activity might not be suitable for all because the, this is florist wire that I've got here. If you go into your local florist, I'm sure she would give you um, a few ready cut pieces or maybe your local handyman would have something that he would be able to cut up into lens for you. It's jaggy. Um, it's jaggy. So if you are working with people who need a wee bit extra support, just be wary of doing this activity with them. So I have got my long piece of florist wire. I'm going to bend the bottom again so that the pieces don't fall off it. And I am just going to thread through my apple, cheese, and I'm going to spoil them. I'm going to give them three pieces of dried fruit. 
they go daft for this, so they do. They, they love this in particular. Again, don't put out too much because you want the birds to eat it and, and not be wasted. And you could attract the wrong um, visitors to the garden if you put too much food lying about. So likewise, I'm just going to keep on threading on my fruit, cheese, fruit, dried fruit, fruit, cheese, dried fruit, whatever way you want. And then I'm going to bend the hoop over at the other end. And I'm going to hook that over a branch on my tree that the wee birds could fly over to and peck away and enjoy their kebab. If you're working with people who are uh, prone to anxiety, don't give them so much choice as what I had here, deciding what pattern to make myself. I would suggest that you get one dish and maybe put three pieces of cheese in it, three pieces of apple and three raisins. And that is what they're going to put on their skewer. And that takes away any unnecessary angst. So I'll move close to the side. Okay. Last one that I'm going to demonstrate is making your own fat balls. This is one that I made earlier. Um, it's a mixture of lard. Now make sure you use lard and not margarine or flora or any of those kind of um, saturated fats because they're not good for the birds. Lard um, is the, the one that you want to go for. And I've got a mix of bird feed here and I have got, I've already chopped up my lard. And I've put in a dod of bird feed. You're going roughly one lot of lard to two lots of other stuff. And that can be a mix of ready mix uh, seeds and nuts. And earlier on, I got some porridge oats, Scots porridge oats, and I have grated up some mild cheddar cheese. And I'm just going to plonk all of that in. Now, ideally, I would have uh, melted this fat, this lard, a little bit, um, but because I don't have a microwave in my wonderful hut here, I'm just going to go with it, we've been a, with it being a little bit hard. Now, I'm putting gloves on, and for anybody that has watched me doing any of these previous sessions, know that I never put on gloves. But the reason I'm putting gloves on today is because you get into such a mess working with the fat. And I don't have a sink out here either. So I won't be able to wash my hands before I do the next thing and I'll just get into a right sticky wicket. So I'm cheating. This is such a fabulous activity to get your hands into. I mean, like it is messy, but it is oh so, so good. So basically you're just like squidging up. And I'm going to stand up for this so I can put my back into it. The noise is good, the feeling is good. And oh, I've done this with children and they love it. And they love getting their hands dirty and it's easy enough cleaned up. Make sure you've got a fairy liquid or another kind of washing up liquid close by, a basin of hot water, squirt some fairy liquid onto your hands once you've finished doing this, obviously. Um, Rinse it off in the warm water and all the fat dissolves really, really quickly. So it's actually, it's not dirty. It's not, I'm saying it's a messy job. It's messy because you can get into a mess. But look at that. That's like a stress ball I've made as well. So there we go. I have now got my cheese, oat, um, oat flakes, oatmeal lard, bird seed. I could have put in some cake in there if I wanted to, but we've got no leftover cake in our house. And I've just made it into a lovely bowl. So, take my gloves off now. We want to put it into something. We could just leave that ball as a big ball, 
put it in the fridge for a couple of hours to get it to sort of go hard again. And then you can put it outside into a feeder that takes the fat balls or just put it on a bird table, or you can make it into a little sort of like hang alone feeder itself. Now, any kind of plastic box a pot will do the job. This is a, a, a cream tub. This probably had some ridiculously expensive, far too fat inducing pudding in it. This is a yogurt tub. And these are little pots. Now, last week we were doing succulents, and these are some of the succulents that I potted up. These are the tiny little pots that came out. Um, that the succulents came out of. And what I've done is I have taken just normal garden string and I have thread the string through one of the drainage holes, then tied it in a loop here, left myself a long piece of string, and I will use the string to secure this onto a, a branch or a you know, or maybe on a bird feeder itself. Take my spoon or use your fingers and just squash it in. Pack it in. Fridge it down. And because it's cold here today, I would actually put this outside straight away because it's going to solidify pretty, it is quite solid just now, but you want it to be a bit harder. Um, hang that outside and the wee birds will come and hang and peck away and get all the goodness of the nuts and seeds, plus the added uh, bonus of having that lovely edible energy giving fat in there as well. So that is your own fat balls that you can make and hang up. Lovely activity, that's my favorite one to make. And then the last one that I'm going to show you here is, because Valentine's is coming up, I cut out a Valentine shape and I spread uh, peanut butter on it. And then I got some of my bird seed I just sprinkled the bird seed over the peanut butter. I don't know if you can see some of the peanut butter there. And I have thread through a pipe cleaner. And I'm going to actually hang this onto a trellis outside that has got honeysuckle growing up it. So the wee birds can come and they'll be able to hang onto the, the structure of the trellis or the honeysuckle and peck and eat the the peanut butter and the seed up. And this is a real by the by, okay? I'm sure we all recognize these and there are loads of them lying about the pavement, which is really annoying, but I am not suggesting you pick them up off the pavement, okay? But if you've got any, the one that you bring home yourself because you're no longer using it, you could take this, the, the hoops off the, cut the ear piece bits off, you could actually use that as your, instead of a pipe cleaner to hang your birds up. That's the only thing I could think I could use that to for upcycling. But maybe you don't want to reuse them, which is fine as well. Okay, so that uh, that's my three or four uh, bird feeders that I wanted to show you that you could um, copy and hopefully engage your clients with to make bird feeders and put them outside and perhaps attract more birds into the garden and create another activity that you can be doing by spotting the birds. One last thing that I have to show you before I hand back over to Jane and Jenny is I made a wee bird spot. I told you I'm now a bird spotter. These birds are the pictures that you get when you sign up to the RSPB uh, Big Bird Watch. You get them in bigger sizes as well. You can download bigger um, sizes of them or if you've got a photocopy, you'll be able to extend them. So what I did was, two days ago, I thought, right, what birds do I have come to my garden just now? And I wrote down all the birds that I know 
I've seen in the garden now. And I only made up two of these sheets because I just had to try it out with my daughter to make sure that the game actually worked. And each player's card has got some doublers, the birds that always come. I've got loads of robins come and I have loads of uh, blue tits and great tits come the whole time. So I made both cards have both of the popular birds. And then I divvied out the other birds that don't come quite so often. And what we did was we sat down and we, each of us, I had the yellow, Ellis had the red, and we had markers. And as soon as we saw one of our, a, when a blackbird came, it meant that we both could mark off blackbird, like so. I don't know if you can see that terribly well. Yeah, that's good. And then a chaffinch came. So the chaffinch got blocked out, but this one didn't. And then a house sparrow came, so that one got blocked out. And then the wood pigeon came, so that one got blocked out. And then both of us managed to spot a robin. I can't remember who won the game to tell you the truth because I was just so excited that it worked. And it was a really quick game and it was personalised to our garden. There's no point putting birds on that don't come to your garden because nobody will ever get a full house. Make sure you're using birds that come to your garden. So there you go. There's a wee game that you can maybe make up that will suit your own selves. And if it works for you, please let me know because I've never made a game before. Okay, that's me, Jenny. I think I've talked enough. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joan. That was fantastic. And I uh, really like the bird bingo there. That was brill. Um, we'll have some questions now, I think. Uh, if I can pass this over to Jane and um, just put us on to gallery view so we can see everybody. That's marvellous. Jane, have we got any questions that we want to share around and perhaps uh, Joan can tell us? We do, Jenny. Um, yes. Lorraine asked, does the colour hoop put the birds off, Joan? Um, Lorraine had read that uh, the birds keep away from the red bird feeders. Is that true, do you know? Oh, that one's near to me. Um, I, I can't say, oh gosh, I got an orange cheerio ring that was out there that's just about finished now. It was an orange pipe cleaner that was on it. I think the bird they don't like anything new. They don't like any, they don't like change. They don't like um, different um, different people. Even my mum is headed into her birds and she's got absolutely every single bird coming to her garden. And she's got a robin that will come and actually feed out of her, her hand. If I even go out into the garden, the birds all fly away when I'm in the garden. But when mum's out there in a row, they quite literally flock towards her. Now, I'm sure if I went out more regularly into her garden and sat with real worms on my hand, the wee robin would eventually come to me. I think it's changed that they don't like, um, but I'll stand corrected. If they don't like red, then that could be true. Okay. And uh, I think it was Sean had actually said, we're not sure whether it was the wires or the pipe cleaners, Joe, but hobby crafts sell them as well for less than a pound a pack. So that's a bit of a hint for everybody as well. <laughs> Um, Mar Margaret wanted to know, do the birds eat oats? Oats. Okay. Um, pinmeal is the best kind of oat. Every single garden bird loves pinmeal, especially the little one. Now, like your Scots porridge oats, they're fine. They like that. That's what I actually mix to my fat ball. Um, or you can put like oats just out in a bird feeder itself and they'll pet away that. But don't cook the oats. Don't make the oats into into porridge, if you see what I mean, don't, don't be doing that. Okay, and Linda has said that instead of using lard, she actually uses coconut oil. And somebody else has said that they, they sometimes use peanut butter. Okay, peanut butter is good, coconut oil is good. Just be wary, don't use desiccated coconut if you're making your fat balls. And um, just because, some, because you can use the coconut oil doesn't mean you can use the desiccated coconut because that can swell up inside the wee birds and give them a really small stomach. <laughs> okay, and Katie has said she used to use veg fat because she was uh, predominantly working with children who were vegetarian or Muslim, uh, so the easiest to avoid animal fat altogether. Yeah, so, good point. Yeah. 
and uh, blackbirds and robins uh, love dried mealworm as well, Margaret said. So that was just a bit of a hint as well. And there was a bit of a, a conversation about squirrels. How do you stop squirrels uh, from taking the food away? Well, so my dad has had a battle with the squirrels for um, maybe about six years since he moved into that house. And the squirrels have won. Um, my dad, oh my goodness, that could, that could be a session in itself, all the things that my dad has tried. You get special squirrel feeders, but you tend to find you have to get the double um, mesh ones because the single mesh ones, for some reason, my dad's convinced that they've worked that one out as well. My dad actually feeds um, the little birds um, in behind the honeysuckle and places like that, um, so that it's harder for the Squirrels. squirrels like to have somewhere really obvious to run along and get into it and get out, whereas the honeysuckle seems to give them a bit of a challenge. He seems to get on better feeding birds that are in a little tree that he's made in the back of the honeysuckle. Um, but no, pigeons are the bane of the air. I noticed in the RSPB uh, website, they've got some tips on feeding birds to some of the squirrels. Okay, uh, so there's a wee bit of conversation. Somebody had said a, a double uh, walled wire feeder would stop the squirrels as well, so that they hadn't tried one. And Susan Steele has said a long washing line can be used for hanging a fat ball feeder, but don't use a, a prop because the squirrels would just use that and run up to get the fat balls, which they do do, don't they? And that's all the questions for today, Joan. Hey, hey thank you very much. It's marvellous. Can I just say that Linda's just put a link on about bird food and squirrels uh, on if anybody wants to click that as well, so. That's great. I'm just taking a note of that so we can put it around in the email after. Um, we're going to email everybody afterwards with, uh, well, not immediately afterwards, but perhaps early next week with um, the PowerPoint presentation links to the YouTube video of this um, session, the practical session, and uh, any, any other information that we can pop on there. So I'll try and include that one about uh, the squirrels there. So thank you very much, Joan. And can we show our appreciation to Joan uh, through our reactions? Thanks very much, Joan. That was fantastic. And uh, that's great. So um, marvellous. So this brings us to the end of the session today. As I said at the beginning, please remember to send, send us your photos. Uh, send us your photos of you doing your doing your activities with your groups and that'd be great. We'd love to, we'd love to see them and we'd love to share them. So um, look out for our um, sessions coming up. Sign, sign up for our email bulletin. Yep, that's at the bottom of the Trellis webpage. Um, I'm going to leave you with our link now to the survey. And um, I just want to wish you um, goodbye and thank you very much for attending and making these sessions what they are because it's great to have all of you um, come on board and uh, be here with us. So thanks very much and um, I'm just going to post up the survey now and um, we'll see you next time. Bye! 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 Bye!